So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a update on Mila's brain abnormality. So we have Mila joining us today. So she's just hanging out with us. We just got back from going to a birthday party for one of Santiago's friends. And um, so I wanted to come home and sit down and do the update video. So it's actually been about a month since I have filmed a video on Mila. So any of her updates. So we did, I'm just gonna try and think of what appointments we've had. So we've had, we went down to a sick kids hospital and we had her neurology appointment. And then we've also had physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and a low blind vision or blind low vision appointment just to see about her vision testing. So I'm gonna start off with her, oh, and we also saw her pediatrician. So a few of these appointments we had been waiting for until we seen her neurologist down at SickKids Hospital. So when we did that appointment, it was at the end of January and it was our first time meeting her neurologist. So we ended up just going over how she's doing, how she's developing. They did an exam on her just to see how, what they thought of how she's doing and everything. So she basically did say that she is definitely sees delays, but also some improvements of like how she's, well, she's never seen her, but she has seen different things that she's doing that is she's progressing a little bit. So basically trying to think of what else. Hi, she's in the pack here. So we did talk about the next steps basically. So we are still gonna be doing a, an MRI. So that is gonna be hopefully within the next two months. So they did say it does take, they're pretty backed up right now. So it's gonna take a couple months to get that appointment. So we're hoping soon that they're gonna be calling us with that being booked and we can go do that. They did say, unfortunately, since she is still really little, they are gonna have to sedate her and put her to sleep. So they said that'll take, I think about 15, 20 minutes to give her that medication. And then she's gonna go into the MRI by herself, which is gonna be maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And we'll just have to wait outside for her. So once we do that appointment, we'll both go down to the hospital with her and then we'll just wait and walk around and just wait for her to have that appointment. Um, the other thing the, neuro the neurologist did talk about too is that um, just seeing what testing we're doing also on the side. So I did let them know about we're doing physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and then we're looking to her vision because we have noticed a lot with her vision. It is, she does glitch back and forth a lot. So <laughs> you're giggling away. So basically um, we do believe that she can see. We just don't know how well right now. So when we hold toys to a certain angle and in her face, she can definitely see it. We just are still quite unsure about that. So they have actually referred us to go see an ophthalmologist at SickKids Hospital. So we are doing that next month in March. We have an appointment booked. And then we are also locally seeing a blind low vision testing just to, it's more of, I wanna say more like hands-on testing and not actual like going to an optometrist where they're looking through the scopes and doing the eye drops and all that, which is what they're gonna do at SickKids. So what we do locally is just getting toys and just seeing like how, where she sees, what lights there and like what angles and just her tracking and following. So that's good. It's more of a, like, I guess a physio standpoint of it. And they are actually in the same program, the physiotherapist and the occupational therapist and the low blind vision so that we can have them both come into the appointment. So we actually, the other day we had another our second appointment through occupational therapy and she did have the lone blind vision therapist go and join in so that they kind of when they saw certain things they were just showing and telling each other oh i've noticed this that she's been improving since the last time i saw her and and what they've noticed and they just kind of see and make their notes and recommendations of what we should improve on and they actually the occupational therapist she did recommend me take a video while i was at that appointment because she did notice that when Mila was laying on her back, she was reaching for her toys and she was really um, shaking and doing like a tremor, they called it. So I'm actually gonna insert a clip of that in the video of what they wanted me to send to sick kids just to see if they have any questions about it. Because when we did go down to see her, or her neurologist, she did give us an email so that we can contact them anytime that we have any changes or anything like that. And she did also ask if 
Mila's had any seizures or anything like yet, but she hasn't had any seizures, not that we've noticed, um, because there's different um, areas that they could have them. So they could either have like a full seizure or they could just basically zone out. Just want us to keep an eye on that as well, just to make sure to see if she's doing any of those type of patterns because those are still like a form of having a seizure. She's doing good like that. Me, Mila? Where's your toy? And then after that, we had, what else? We've done physiotherapy again. So our, her exercises have actually become more hands-on instead of just working on her stretching and neck muscles and all that. So we actually, we have started a new exercise where we have uh, a small ball and she sits on it and we bounce her up and down and we tilt her from one side to the next just to make sure that she's using her core and her neck strength to hold herself up they said i could also use a yoga ball and i do have a yoga ball so i might try that first before going and getting a smaller ball just because i know if i like a lot of times our dog gets a hold of the soccer balls and all of that and she pops them so i'm kind of thinking of maybe i'll try the yoga ball first and then we'll go and possibly get this smaller one she said the smaller one is they recommend more just because it's better for her size and you can sit it like sit on the ground have it between your legs and just have her sitting there um she actually really did enjoy that so we're gonna start doing that at home starting with that and then we are still working on her tummy time as well so she still doesn't hold her neck up the best so that's the other thing too that we're kind of looking into more of ways that we can have her lay down like this sometimes and play with toys and work on her her working against gravity to grab things because she's still not the best with her left and right and then the other thing is that they're recommending her to have smaller periods of sitting up straight so that she's not putting too much strain on her neck because she does still do that wobble and stuff so there's a few other areas that they're kind of working on her neck as well is just because we are going to be recommended to see a dietitian or dietary specialist or therapist just because they since Mila is seven months now she hasn't actually been eating any solid foods so when we did go down to a lot of the doctors are kind of I guess back and forth with questioning why we haven't started her on solids so some of them think that we should try it because she has some control of her neck and then others are saying no not at all because she can't hold her neck at all so we're gonna wait a little bit more and see if we can talk to her neurologist again about it and then talk to the diet the dietitian to see what kind of things that they can introduce just because with her not holding her head up the best right now she does have obviously a higher risk of her choking on food and all that just because she doesn't have that full strength so going back when we had because i know for one we had santiago we i think he was definitely by two months he was holding his head up fully on his own and then by the five months four or five months we started introducing a bit more of the pablum in his milk to put him to when he would, went to bed and then we started doing the purees and all that and he was obviously fine on that because he had he was able to hold his head up perfectly fine and he never had com like any complications with that but with mila we noticed that when she drinks her bottle sometimes she does drink a little bit too fast and she will kind of choke a little bit on it and spit up so we've had to work on that as well just having her slowly like feeding her a bit slower instead of just giving her a bottle all at once and just taking a break burping and then going back to feeding so that's another thing that we are looking into a bit more so we're just not too sure yet of what they're going to recommend so we have had a little bit of i want to say like i guess mixed opinions on it from the doctors and all because some of them are saying yeah you should try and others are still kind of on like what we're thinking of being like okay yeah you're doing the right job and you're being cautious about it because of it being a choking hazard so we're kind of like still doing what obviously like i'm always going to do what i feel like that's best for mila and not always um just because i think like oh because she's seven months old she should be eating it right so like you'll always know like your own intuitions of like what you should be doing for your children and stuff so i know that when i go to occupational therapy the therapist there she does say like i am doing like on the right track of not feeding her 
the solid diet because she also agrees like if you don't have a neck strength like obviously you can't you know that like function of eating properly and swallowing like more of like a thicker consistency of stuff is not the best so yeah we're definitely going to be working on that and hopefully soon we're going to get into seeing the specialist more about that and just kind of getting some more questions or our questions answered um what's the other thing And then the, low, the blind low vision program, we actually had our first appointment at home. So they did a home visit, which was really nice because I feel like sometimes when Mila's at home, she's definitely more vocal. She's comfortable because this is where we are most of the time. And when sometimes when she goes to her appointments, they're noticing that she's not as like making noises like this or happy or anything. So they do actually want to they're thinking about soon we're gonna do a speech therapist as well just to kind of see why she's a bit more quiet sometimes and um maybe it's just like she gets a bit shy when she's out i don't really know yet so we're just gonna see about that right so we are i feel like definitely some of the appointments so far since we're doing our first appointment it's more of like orientation to see how she's doing how like what they see they're kind of more observing how she is and then giving us feedback and all of that so i feel like so far a lot of the appointments have been a little bit more repetitive on our end just because every time we go to the appointment it's like seeing like oh what does she do what does she like this does she do that and stuff like that right so that's the only thing that i've noticed so far with the appointments but other than that i find that everything has been so beneficial because every time we do go into an appointment she either I find that they're noticing that she is making progress and changes but then sometimes we go in and she's also i find that she's taking a few steps back and going back to her habit so and for an example when we did go to physio she was doing that thing where she was like always tilting to her left side and sitting like this a lot and now she's i find she's starting to do that again so there's also like little areas that we have to kind of step back and do the corrections again and work on those stretches and just showing her like how to lay down or and just like turn different ways and stuff so a few things i do find that like with her right now is that a lot of things we are kind of like doing over again because of that so it does get a little bit repetitive but she is definitely making a lot of changes and then every time we do go to the appointments we are also adding new skills and just figuring out like new ways to do things and toys to play with her and all of that so she's definitely is making some improvements that they were noticing as well and a lot of the times any of the questions that i've had and stuff too like they've already like noticed certain things and stuff like that so it's really good in that sense so as of right now i do believe occupational therapy is still monthly but when i did go to physiotherapy this week we had two like we had two separate appointments so physio and then we did occupational therapy and so they did recommend that with physiotherapy since i am currently off work right now with the kids she said that we can do an eight week physiotherapy appointment so every tuesday we're going to be going in for a half hour to 45 minute appointment and then we're going to be working on things to help improve so i was actually really happy that they did recommend that because i felt like when we were going once a month it kind of wasn't enough because like i said she was improving and then she was kind of going back to like certain things so at least when you go in every single week you can see like the tiny little differences and just introducing more things and all of that which is going to be really beneficial and um i feel like at this point any type of appointments that we can go to i'm definitely saying yes to go to it and if they want the other specialists to come in and join we're doing that as well because anything that can help it's so important right now that she's still really young and she can absorb so much stuff so I'm definitely really thankful that we do have some of those resources really close to home in that program. So we definitely have been adding more of that in. The other follow-up that we did do was going to see her pediatrician up locally near us. So that appointment, um, I did talk mostly to the resident doctor and then at the end I did see her pediatrician. So we just kind of went over um, what they thought and how she was seeing and like asking all of those questions and stuff. So basically... Not much really came out of that appointment just because it was kind of just like meeting them and like an orientation and then what our next steps are. So basically they recommended us to get the MRI next and then after that we're going to be doing 
uh, more follow-up so within I think she said about four months we go back to see them unless we get the MRI and get all of those results and stuff like that so basically as of right now most of our appointments are just kind of they're kind of booking further out but then questionable like if we get certain tests back then they'll rearrange them so as of right now like everything is still kind of all over the place and we're not really having like too many like set up appointments like back to back other than obviously like her therapy appointments those are all pretty consistent right now but as far as the neurologist that's so every like six months unless needed type thing and then her pediatrician is like every like four months until needed type thing so basically other than that like everything is pretty much still um we're kind of just going like day by day and stuff hey nova do you want to come say hi so come lay down you just had to get in the video didn't you I believe I covered pretty much everything so actually I kept meaning to every time I go to the appointments I kept meaning to go home and then start filming and just having it so fresh in my head that whenever I'm talking it's just you know what just like what I just, just talked about and stuff but um I also wanted to kind of combine all of these appointments into one video also just because I wanted to see how frequently we're going to be going to these certain appointments as well. So now that I kind of have a bit of an idea, but it is all, all obviously up in the air depending on how she's doing. So it's okay. So yeah, other than that, we're just going to be, I'll do, I'm definitely going to do my video separate of updating about Mila and then I'll just try and do every video after I do the appointments just so that it's a little bit more in detail instead of just me trying to remember going back and stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's about it for today's video. So I'm going to go take Nova outside because she wants to go play. So yeah, I hope that I hope that I covered everything. And then if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. And I'm going to be doing updates soon. So starting in March, I believe it's on the 6th or something like that first week. We're going to be starting Mila's weekly physiotherapy. So I'm going to start doing those updates by then. And then we'll go from there type thing. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and um, yeah, I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.